So, my name's Luke, and today I'm going to talk about family and legacy in video games. So, thanks for legacy. So, family in games. Basically, fa video games usually use family as a plot point. They usually... It's usually something that evokes an emotional bond. It's something that the player can relate to. But he uses this with these three points, saving, losing, and avenging, usually. So you're often saving a loved one, you're avenging a lost sibling, parent, whatever. But what if this fails? And sometimes this does fail. The most notable time for me that this failed, and when I started really thinking about this, was with The Last of Us. Now, The Last of Us is a great game, and I'm not being facetious about that, but it does rely on these three points a little bit too much, to the point that the whole story just becomes this hodgepodge of saving, losing, losing, saving, losing, losing, saving, avenging, saving, avenging, kind of saving at the end, I don't know. Not to spoil that there, but... Um, but it falls flat on right at the beginning for me on this like, this one main relationship between Joel and his daughter. Now, critics absolutely adored this part of the game, and well, some critics did, most critics did, and the Twitter sphere went absolutely crazy, feeling all oh, the feels. You know, everyone was crying and things, but it just it felt so flat for me, and I had to stop and think. Well, why the hell isn't this working for me? Why is everyone else just crying, sniffling over this, this sad, sad part of the game? And I just thought, yeah, okay, that was kind of alright, I guess. And I came up with two reasons. One is possibly because oversaturation leads to apathy, and we've seen that in so much art. Like someone dies, and you're supposed to just feel sad for no reason other than they were related. The second part is that. I'm an absolutely heartless bastard and don't want kids. So if you lose a daughter, maybe sometimes I'm just like, eh. like, I can have empathy. Like, it's horrible. You've lost a child. Like, I get it. That is one of the most horrid things ever. But there's obviously something that just caused a tiny little bit of a disconnect for me with this. So it got me thinking that, well, actually before that, just to prove that I'm not a complete heartless bastard, here is me with my two nieces, absolutely adorable, love them. This is what I consider my legacy is to cause these two to be the biggest pains in the asses for my family and to ruin every family photo. So I'm not a complete bastard. I can ruin someone's life as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it got me thinking that there's got to be more than just this unconditional love, the, an assumed relationship that you don't build on, but you're just supposed to care about. So it got me thinking about what does family mean? So I think the family is just, it's a social construct, really. It's family is this diverse and complex thing, which as the world becomes more diverse and complex, well, it reflects that. It moves with social shifts of economy, culture, politics. Families are always changing. And really, the entire purpose of family is to stabilize and socialize. That's one of the main things that it's supposed to do for the next of kin. And then on top of that, it's basically just a support group for knowledge, opportunity, and security. That's kind of the legacy that we're leaving behind. That's kind of what you're supposed to do with the next generation. Obviously, then there's other things of legacy, such as genetic legacy, or there's more tangible things, such as possessions that you pass down. Genetic legacy, I consider my legacy if you haven't noticed, from my father, I got the fact that I'm an absolute short ass. I got the fact that I've got this big, huge, bulbous red nose. From my mother, I'm lucky to have thick, luscious hair and equally thick, luscious cheeks. And yeah, great. Thanks for those legacies, guys. Like, really appreciate it. Also, then there's other things. Going back to the knowledge. So, from my mother, I got the knowledge that. It's all right to be late. Sod it. You can just be late if you want. From my dad. Well, my, my dad likes Elvis, so I kind of just learned to be able to do this and go, <laughs> like that, that's what I got from my father. But I, also from my dad was this idea of the Kia curse. Now, Kia's my second name, and when it, basically, whenever something goes bad, my dad would be, that's the Kia curse. So, bus doesn't turn up. Kia curse. 
Emails hacked, key a curse. Spent all your money on a new guitar, but then you receive an unexpected bill and require immediate dental care as a filling crumbles in your mouth. What's that? No, that's stupidity. <laughs> that was what I shouldn't have done three months ago. <laughs> that was everything that's wrong with me. Now, I know there's no such thing as a key curse. When I was a child, I thought there might be. But it's basically just some people will blame things on gods. Some people will blame things on religion. Some people will... You have to rationalize these things which are going wrong. If something goes right, I never blame the Kia Curse. Then I'm lucky Luke. It's like, woohoo, bye. I'm, yeah, yeah, money or something. I don't know, like good times. So I know there's no such thing as the Kia Curse. It's the way... It's usually the way that we perceive the world around us, react to it. And a little bit of luck as well, I guess. So, where does this all come down to? Basically, video games need to explore something beyond just, you should feel for this person because they're related to you. And a game which does this for me, in a way that I very much doubt the developers ever intended to, is Rogue Legacy. Now, Rogue Legacy, have everyone played it or know about it? Yeah. It's called, some people call it a roguelike light. And basically that just means it's taken some things from the roguelike genre, so procedurally generated castle, hack slash gameplay, a bit of magic, kind of permadeath. It's basically just an allusion to permadeath. It's not actually permadeath. It also has this simple game loop that you're going through a castle, you have to try and make the best run possible, get as much gold, get runes, all that kind of thing, and just gather them all up. And you have to fight these four bosses that you can eventually fight this big bad boss and get rid of a curse. So what does this have to do with family and legacy? Well, when you die in Rogue Legacy, Salador just created this thing which they've called a genealogical roguelite. So you die and then you take on the role of your children. And you keep doing this until you get rid of the curse and you beat the big bad. So basically, all of your children are just stuck in this loop of dying until you finally succeed. And you gain money, rooms, and upgrades, and they pass down to each generation. This, this is your inheritance. This is what you're given. And on top of that, you can inherit a big bloody castle that you keep creating throughout the entire game. Yeah, it's all great. This is fun. And it basically means that every time you do all this and you pass this down, it gives a greater opportunity to your next child, to the next of kin, to have a greater opportunity of success. Now, this is all starting to sound a bit like big bad words that people don't like to use, like privileges and oligarchy and nepotism and all these kind of bad, bad things that people just go... And I'm, I'm a Welsh millennial. I have a chip on my shoulder, okay? Especially... Living in London, I used to live here. I had to move three times to get away from the rising rent. I have problems with this place. So, <laughs> but then I, I think about it, take a little step back, have a, have a chill pill or whatever, and I realise it's not quite as simple as that. And there are things, and Rogue Legacy takes this into account. I've, I've, I've skipped past something, but never mind. <laughs> it takes into account the fact that even these A's that take on castles and money and extra powers are still subject to the whimsicality of genes. And this is all the list of random traits that the characters can have. And it's absolutely fantastic. A favorite of mine is gigantism because yeah, okay, your parents saved enough money that you can fly and become a dragon and shoot fireballs, but so what? You're too tall to get through a little secret passage and get to this awesome loot crate. Yeah, like, haha, <laughs> tall people. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, it, there are things out there which it doesn't matter, all this oligarchy and privilege. And another big one, then, is the big bad world outside, which, in Rogue Legacy is this ever-changing castle. And it's, it's analogous to the real world because no matter what you pass down, no matter what you teach, each generation is... Well, it's, it's experiencing a familiar but completely different world at the same time. 
So it doesn't really matter. And to get through this big bad world, to get through the castle that's constantly changing, yeah, you use all this money. You use all the things that you've been passed down. But you also have to use perception. You have to use the way you react has got to be great. You have to have a little bit of luck as well. And it's starting to sound like how I got away with the Kia Curse and started to defeat that. So basically, at the end of the day, families come with burdens, they come with blessings, they come with fortunes and misfortunes, far beyond just unconditional love, which is just such a trope these days in video games and, and films and books and art in general. But video games really need to look past that. The way the Rogue Legacy really hit me, where it finally came through, was when I started to think about the children in Rogue Legacy, their life must be shit. Like, they're forced into this vocation. They're forced to go into this castle that none of their predecessors have ever come back from. Like, they have to do this. How horrid is that? What a shite life. <laughs> like, that's horrible. So basically, unlike Last of Us, which didn't affect me at all, Rogue Legacy really hit me and made me think, you know what? My family isn't that bad. I'll take being short because you could just end up in this family that has a big castle or a big tower. Like, you could be Trump. You could be a, a, you could be a little Trump. <laughs> Thank you very much.